So in this video, I want to talk about vulnerability. Now, hold on, just wait a minute. Vulnerability is one of the most powerful tools for connection out there, not just with dating, but with relationships. If you're married, uh, with friendships, vulnerability is everything. I'm not talking about neediness. We're going to break down the difference. I'm not talking about being a victim. There's a huge difference. And when you understand the difference, you'll understand why some people can create really powerful bonds, why other people actually lose people. So before I do, make sure to like, subscribe and share and make sure to comment. We love those comments. Let's dive in. So what do I mean by this? What is real vulnerability, strong vulnerability that makes you powerful as a human being, as a man in your relationships and your bonds? See, I think everything's about love, whether you're dating, whether you're meeting a woman uh, and falling in love, whether you're married, whether it's with your children, whether whatever, it's all about love. Because when you remove all the emotions out of the body, all that's left is love because emotions are resistance to love. Our core state in deep meditation is these bliss states where you feel lots of love. These core states of being are love and vulnerability is about accessing our deeper emotions, moving in the direction of our feelings to reveal these deeper parts of ourselves. You know, some of these different aspects of love, gratitude, joy, peace, but ultimately sadness too. Because if you're sad and somebody listens to you and you connect with them through the sadness, through the grief, not neediness, but sadness, and you listen to them and you're there for them or they're there for you, you actually tend to bond better. Now, what is the difference between a man that is attractive to a woman, to somebody else that's vulnerable and one that is needy? There's a big difference. You see, the man that is attractive, that is vulnerable, speaks his heart with courage. He's actually encouraged. This is what I feel. Whether you like it or don't like it, whether you reject me or you don't reject me, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm going through. And it may hurt. It may be great. It may be scary, but it's real. And the man that speaks his feelings, but is needy, begging, pleading, please love me back. That guy right there, he has a problem. He is not being ultimately vulnerable, is he? He's not being ultimately real. He's being needy. He's actually trying to manipulate the other person. And it all comes down to that. In your expressing your emotions and your feelings, are you trying to manipulate the other person, pull them in, get them to feel sorry for you, get them to feel bad for you, get attention? Or are you setting them free? Are you actually creating space for them to just be there for you and connect with you or vice versa. Are you creating space for them to just be and connect? And in that you get to see somebody's real strength because if somebody could express their sadness or their hurt, but they stay strong in it and they own it and they create their own space and you're just there listening, that's really sexy, isn't it? Now, what's an example of this? There was a woman I was dating. We'd broken up. We hadn't seen, really talked in a long time, but I really still cared about her. And this is the first time I learned about real vulnerability. And I was challenged to go express my vulnerability to her. But I was like, this isn't going to work. I've done this before. It's never worked. I don't, this isn't right. And the man that was teaching me to do this said, look, do it just like this. And he explained it to me. He said, go up, say your piece, let go all attachment to outcome, say it like a man. And then if she doesn't respond, walk away. She's not your girl. And I was like, this isn't going to work, but I'll do it. So I walked up to her. She was a violin player. She was getting off work at this pub. I was younger, much younger, and I just said to her, hey, I got to talk to you. And I felt the energy pull inside on her. I felt her go down. She started to walk away from me. I said, no, really, I want to talk to you. And so I went and we walked to her car and she was kind of in a hurry. She started her car. She's getting ready to leave. And I said, no, I really want to tell you something. And she said, oh, she heard it that time, turned off the car, turned, looked at me, looked me in the eye and said, what? And that's when I knew it was on. She was listening now. And I looked at her and I opened my heart. You got to feel vulnerable right here. And I said, well, I really want to tell you this before I move away because I may never see you again. And um, it, 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 I'll be really upset if I don't at least say what I feel. And if you don't feel the same way, that's perfectly fine. But at least I said it. And then I followed up with, I care about you. I really care about you. And I really love to go deeper with you, get to know you better. I really love for us to work this out. And if you don't feel the same way, I understand, but at least I'm here. At least I came here. And I think this is when I said this part, but I said, but at least I came here to express how I feel. And I hope you feel the same way. And she went, Oh, 
And she got up and we walked out, up, out, up, out from her car, sat down on the curb in the back and talked for the next 45 minutes about us. It was powerful realization to me of what vulnerability really does to bring you out of this space and to connect you to another human being. And that was very different than what I would have done in the past. In the past, I would have said something like, hey, can we work this out? Come on, there's got to be a way. I really care about you. There's, you know, I don't want to lose you. There's a begging or a pleading energy in there. You got to take all that out and just be real with people. Vulnerability could be simple too. Let's, let's take it in a new direction. It could be a little thing. You know, I really, recently my mother passed away and I would talk about my mother and I would talk about it and there might be a little tear that comes up. Yeah. I sat there at the hospice care with her. I cared about her. I loved her. I loved her. You know, and there was, she became the sweetest human being when she passed. And there was a, some deep emotion that would come up in that. It's kind of resolved itself now, but it was in there. And people would be like, oh, wow, man, I really feel that. Or if I saw an old friend, it's like, dude, I really miss you. There's just something about you. It's good to see you. And that could be a vulnerable moment. It could be looking at somebody and saying, you know, it, a girl that you haven't seen in a while, a girl you've been dating, I just love looking into your eyes. If I haven't seen you in a while, you, you have such beautiful eyes. You know, this vulnerable, connected, not you have beautiful, beautiful eyes up here, right here. You know, you have such beautiful eyes. They're so radiant. They really take up the space. That little bit of vulnerability could be huge. So that's the power of non-needy vulnerability. And I want to invite you to bring this into your life. Bring it in with your family. Bring it in with you got kids or a wife. Bring that love to the relationship. Really connect and own it. Let the vulnerability, not all the time, but just enough, a little here and there, do the talking. Practice. Go out and find a few people right now that you need to say something to that, that from the heart that's a little more vulnerable. Feel the heart. Ask it to get raw and speak your vulnerable truth. And... Uh, so you can literally write those people down. I did this act, by the way. I wrote down like 10 people and I called them up and I told them exactly what I felt. Some of them cried, some of them didn't say anything. And this is, this is when I was practicing my vulnerability. And people I really had something to say to, and it was life changing for me. So I wanna invite you into that same practice. Now, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you got a lot of value out of it. Uh, definitely watch my previous video on tension because I, I hadn't done one on tension in a while and I think it's a better version of that video. So that's up uh, right before this one. Definitely check out my ebook, The Art of Fearless Seduction. That should be somewhere in the banner or down in the uh, description box. Definitely check that out. Uh, we also have physical copies of the book too. And uh, definitely like, subscribe, share, and comment. We love those comments. Let me know where you're going to be more vulnerable, where you practice vulnerability, what's your experience with vulnerability versus neediness, that type of stuff. I definitely want to hear more. Okay. So we'll see you in the next video. Remember only the confident really live and uh, you have a beautiful day.